Welcome once more to Issues and Answers. Today we are looking at the National Conservation Authority, the NCA, and the NCA emanating out of the Act, of, Act 16 of 1999, and it has been enforced since April 30th, 1999. You know that the NCA sort of replaced what was called the Parks and Beaches Commission. With us today in studio are Mrs. Jacinta Lee, who is the general manager of the NCA, and with her is Mr. Edwin, Mr. James Edwin, who's the chairman of the NCA. Welcome both of you to Issues and Answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, the NCA, St. Lucians would probably know the NCA as right. probably the authority that tends to beaches and other stuff like that of historical and not national no. um, importance. Uh, Tell us a bit more about the main functions of the NCA. As you said, the NCA, it identifies manages and, and conserves our natural assets and particularly our beaches and coastal areas and that's um, predominantly um, what what we do okay so i'm sure that you have a lot of functions on a day-to-day -day oh, basis yes. to ensure <laughs> that you, you you really ensure that you have all beaches in pristine condition right. and all the other aspects that you take care of right we have a, a, a relatively large staff about 98 and most of them are the field staff who maintain the beaches and the facilities and so every day well every day of the week um, we have um, we call them conservation assistants who clean the beaches just to make sure there's no debris there's no litter um, um, on the beaches what basically are the components we know that you would have administration operations and there's also a commercial, commercial product, right you right, have a commercial right. what you call the, the vending department and um, we have nearly 400 vendors across the island so 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 it's a whole lot and apart from that we maintain 34 sites okay, so well there's it a lot of things yes, happening yes, 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 behind yes, the scenes yes. um, at the NCA well, it seems we have a lot to talk about on yes. the program. So, Mr. Edwin, tell us a bit about your experience as chairman coming in and having seen the, the, the mandate of the NCA. Well, yes. Uh, since being appointed uh, chairman of the board of management of the NCA, um, we as a board have undertaken a number of initiatives to actually with the end purpose of trying to, um, what I would say, improve on the delivery of our services. For instance, like um, staffing, advocating for additional resources for the NCA, and uh, planning ahead as to where we want to take the CDA NCA progress in the future. So that we've been working on as a board. And to a limited success, but we, we, we continue to, to advocate and, uh, on behalf of the NCA every day. Okay, so initially we're going to focus a lot on the beaches, its right. maintenance, the, the facilities, and right. uh, the licensing of, right. of, vendors. of the vendors. Yes. 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 So looking at the, the, the beaches on a day-to-day -day basis, what, what is the, the, the routine like for persons who are actually going to ensure that the beaches are kept um, attractive, it's going to be safe, and also the, the, the marine aspect as well, because I think you're also concerned about the actual marine aspect right, to ensure that there's the water. No, no hazards in the, in right. the water and stuff like that. Right, right. So we have our staff, um, and as I said, they work on the beaches, and it's, from, it's a half day from 8 to 12. And they, they clean up, and they do a very good job. Um, we have our contractors who are responsible for collecting um, the waste and to take taking that waste to to the to the to the dump site. Um, we also have on our on some of our beaches we have our facilities. So at Pigeon Island, you notice we have a comfort station and we have a number of of what people call huts, but they're booths. Um, at VG, um, we have the same thing, and we have our com comfort station attendants who are there to make sure you know, that the place is kept clean and, and that people feel comfortable when they visit um, the facility. So we try to ensure you know, the place is, 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 looks as good as possible so that people will enjoy um, the environment. 
Mm -hmm. I'm sure that having said that, there will be a number of challenges because in yes. the whole aspect of you, you do a daily cleanup, but still yes. it's for the use of the public. And yes. you cannot always manage after hours. They said it's half, there's a half day. Right. So I know there would be like litter bins and stuff like that. I know you would also have difficulty in persons who use the beach to recreate. Right. Not just in the water, but come to all activities. A lot of social events are held there. Right. How difficult has it been for it, you to manage it? It's been difficult, right? Mm -hmm. yes, very difficult. Very difficult. Because I, I just don't understand why people feel that they, they, they should come to the beach and just drop the, li drop the litter, just drop the litter and expect other people to clean up. Although we have our cleaners, I mean, people should know that they should take care of the, of the environment. Um, we provided bins in the past. We've had bins on the beaches. But you know what used to happen, Ryan? People used to drop their dead animals in the bins because, you know, the, the, it's, it's, it's wide. So you find dogs, you find cats in the bins. And so you could imagine what happens when our cleaners go. You have all kinds of, you know, the smell, the thing is, is bloated. Right, right. And all of that is just not fair to them. And so um, they had to remove all of the bins from the beaches. We kept some. But what we've started doing, and we have on some of the beaches now, to have special bins with just a small opening so no large animals mm -hmm. can be dropped um, in there. In fact, we worked with um, some schools and they came up with um, the design of, of, the, of the bins, of the enclosures. And so we have, I think that has been working well and we're going to roll out um, onto, onto all of our beaches. Yeah, but it's it, really sad. Yeah. It's really sad. If I may add, it's not only the issue of dead animals, especially on the Pigeon Island area in the Grozilly Road, Nibi. We, ha we had instances where people would leave their homes with their um, domestic garbage and come and dump it in, uh, in the bin provided on the beach on a weekend. Rather than keep it uh, at their homes for when the designated garbage collection day, we had people actually driving to the beach and dumping their garbage. It, it was really posing an unsafe environment and an unsightly environment for, for beach users. So, I mean, it's sad that we had to remove the bins, but we had to consider our workers' health uh, uh, as well. And so it, it's, a, it's difficult balancing the two, yeah. you may uh, appreciate. I yes. could only conclude that these people are using the beaches themselves, because if you are to use the beach, don't care. I don't see why you oh, are I, I don't think there. so. They expect somebody to get rid of it for them. Like I tell them, you dump it there, Maybe we should find a way so that when you come back the next day, it's there waiting for you, but it's not fair to the other <laughs> users. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's yeah. what I wanted to find out, if there's any way that you can monitor and actually see people who do this sort of indiscriminate behavior and what, sort of, what are sort of some of the penalties. Right. But I think right, probably it's, it's, it's a lot of education. Yeah. I don't know whether we've failed because there's been so much education on, on, on keeping your, your environment clean, but it still happens. You have all of these cleanups. It still happens. But what I want to add to is that it's not just domestic waste. Some people bring in, I think, some contractors who, you know, they've, mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've um, demolished a, a particular structure. You would see the toilets, the toilet bowls. You would see the, waste, the face basins. We've, we've even found microwaves, stuff right, like that, that on, yeah. on the beaches. Yeah. And, and it's just not right. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly don't think that's a, a case of you failing as far as education is concerned. That's just mind-boggling. But we'll take our first break on our program. Mm -hmm. We'll be back with issues and answers. I'm innovative. Yeah! I'm competitive. Yeah! I'm productive. I am creative. I constantly improve what I do and how I do it. I am output-oriented. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Thanks for staying with us on Issues and Answers. Today we're looking at matters pertaining to the National Conservation Authority. So we've really got our work cut out with, with the beaches and the, the, the daily challenges. But, but yeah, Sorry, let me just mm -hmm. add something else. Um, fires on the beaches, that's, that's another troubling aspect that people they light fires not just bonfires where they bring in pallets and 
and lights up and so you find at the end of the day you have nails and you have all kinds of charred remains on the beaches and people could get hurt and that way some people also light fires in the, the tree trunks, trunks yes to cook and and you know what happens it, it the trees affected particularly in in sandy beach in in viewfort a lot of that has been done uh, up up north bonfires and you want to implore people that they should not light fires on the beaches and you, you know what they do as well they would light the fires and and in order to to extinguish they would just throw sand over, yeah. over the, the the coals over the whatever it is and you find people you know walking or you have children um just playing in the sun and they could get burnt um you know with this kind of behavior so how difficult is this you for you i think i mentioned it earlier to actually you know police this in terms right. of knowing peak times on the beaches to get some of your staff around the, the wardens and to ensure that when they see these practices that they intervene and advise persons not to engage in these practices right mm -hmm. um if i um one of our staff in fact she she does that um goes around um, just to check, because they find people are supposed to get the permission to, for any organized activity. They need the permission of the NCA. And when they do get that permission, we tell them no lighting of fires, right? So there's a whole list of things. No, no use of um, bottles, breakable bottles on the beach, glass bottles on the beach. So the number of things we tell them. But some people they just go ahead and have the activity without letting us know. But apart from our staff going around to check, there, there are people who call to say, did you give permission for this person or these people to have the activities? Mm -hmm. And then we're able to contact them. So I'll give you just an example. Um, somebody called to say that they noticed some you know, remnants of some fire in a tent at VG Beach. And it was a Sunday, um, my staff went. Although there was nobody there, she was able to track down who was responsible, all right? And the person, we contacted the person, the person came and, and cleaned up. They actually did a good job cleaning up. Um, I think some people are saying that they just don't know the process. They don't know they're supposed to ask for permission to use the beaches for organized events. They just don't know. So I hope with what's happening now, with that kind of discussion we're having, that people um, get to know so that they need to get the permission. So what's the actual process if you need, and for uh, to what extent of event, the magnitude of event that they would need to come to you, and what's the process? Right. If it's, if it's just a simple, you know, you have a family just going to the beach, and people going, and that's okay. But anything organized. So you have people with um, the birthday parties. They want to have a party from, mm -hmm from 10 in the night until 2 in the morning, you know, um, you have mass events, all of that. You need the permission. And, and it's very simple. Um, on our website, um, you could call in, you could come in, email, and we provide you with the form. So there must be a form. You must fill in that form for any organized event. Now, it's important that NEMO is involved. It's, if it's more than 200 people who would be attending that event. Nemo must be involved, the police, the fire service, um, the, 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 well, you need, um, the echo, the if, if there's any music, all of, that, yes, yeah. all of environmental health, if you're going to have mm -hmm. any food. So there's a whole range of, of agencies um, that need to be involved, and particularly security as well, um, the life saving. So any, any activity, any activity that's near the water, people must provide um, the lifeguards. There is a life-saving society, and, and they inform us um, when people apply um, to have lifeguards at the event. So they must have lifeguards. Yeah. 
You see, matters pertaining to the beach, we could never exhaust it. I want to go into another aspect of um, the, the, the vendors and the licensing, but it seems like Mr. Yeah, yes, I, I just wanted to add, uh, uh, when it comes to the challenges that we face in maintaining a pristine environment on the beach for our users, uh, we have the issue of people walking their animals, particularly right. dogs, and not picking up after them. And uh, also um, horseback riding, okay. that is a serious, serious problem. It is dangerous. To, um, physically could cause physical injury and as far and also it's a health hazard to uh, beach users. Um, some time ago, I remember in 2010, uh, there was a, a commission to look at, at um, regulating horseback riding on the beach. I mean, there was a document, I knew it was submitted to the ministry, but that is a document we need to revisit and to actually regulate um, animals, how you bring your animals and what you're allowed to do as far as the beaches are concerned. Because there, there are some people who is mindful and would pick up after their animals, but some people will just leave it and you know what it is. Like when all of this gets into the water, people step what the kind of diseases that you can get from um, animal dump on the beach. Well, I'd just like to add one thing in terms of the horses. Um, sometimes you find people take the, the horses into the water and the horses defecate in the water i mean that's just nasty you know mm -hmm. and i think people need to be you know just be aware of these things that you cannot do that yeah okay i would have liked to have gone into license but just to finish off on the beaches yes. and the very important aspect that we are discussing you brought it up as well the, the aspect of lifeguards because i'm sure persons would feel much more comfortable going into the water knowing that there are lifeguards on most of the beaches, if not all, in St. Lucia. How well have you been able to develop an association with the Life Saving Association in terms of getting a wide presence of lifeguards in St. Lucia beaches? When there are um, organized activities, we, that's one of, the, that's one of the, 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 the things that we say, you must have lifeguards mm -hmm. on the beaches. Um, it would be good for, for there to be lifeguards, and, or, you know, lifeguard towers, towers and, and to have the presence of lifeguards um, all day long on all of our popular beaches. But then at this time, um, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's just not possible, given our limited our, our resources. Limited resources. Stuff, yeah. um, but in most, most of the, well, all of the beaches where there are hotels, um, there are lifeguards. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to get the opportunity to go into, just before our next break, to look at the whole aspect of defending because you know that NCA has a very big part in what happens too, particularly with, with the parks right. as well and maybe some of the, the sites around the island where mm -hmm. visitors normally go to. Tell us how if the, a vendor, someone who wants to vend at a particular location that you are in charge of, how do they get themselves organized and to be in good standing to ply the trade? at locations which you're responsible for. Mr. Chairman? You yeah, OK. <laughs> Basically, I mean, we have a prescribed form that uh, whoever is interested should come into the NCA. They, um, apply, in ap applying, you need to produce uh, references. You need to produce certificates of, of character that police. you get from the police. Um, it depends on your type of vending that you're applying for. Uh, the, fees uh, apply to certain categories. And then we, we do our background checks as well. We ask people who, who from the community that you are originating from something about your character. Because sometimes um, you, you may, your certificate of character from the police <laughs> may not speak t uh, about probably how you behave in the community. It, may, it, it, it will probably only speak to you not having a criminal record, but character is very important to us. So we, we ask questions and uh, we, we take into consideration the nature of what you are applying to, to undertake, whether that area is saturated, for instance, with particular people like um, beach chair vendors. We, we, we try to maintain uh, an, an atmosphere on the beach where it's not only vending that takes place. So in applying, we, we also consider whether there's a, a, a need for the business that you are uh, uh, applying to conduct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me just add, um, 
in terms of, of you, you have the water sports. Um, people, you know, apply for, for boat tours, for jet skis, and we do not give the license unless they have all the proper documents from SLASPA. So they must show the insurance, they must show, apply for hire, they must show that the, the vessels have been inspected, all of that. We need all of these documents before we can say yes, and um, we will give you the license. So anyone, anyone um, going on, 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 a, on, a, on a boat tour would know, okay, this boat is licensed. This boat has a necessary um, insurance. insurance. Yeah, the person who is conducting that boat has the, has the experience and has the skills um, to do that. We, because we work very, very closely with, with SLASPA um, in that regard. Okay. We're due to take our second break on our program, but we'll be right back on issues and answers. Any area that you want. Oi, you realize you step on my toe. Well, do something about it. Uh. That's why I burst in that man. Hold on! If somebody try to cross you, Hold and if my things start to take you, Hold no need for war or violence, cause the police there to help you. Hold if our trouble start in this session, alright, no need for aggression. Hold we don't want no violence in the place. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper. A message from Mission Boy Studio 758, Acid Creations, and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Thanks for staying with us. To remind you once more, you're watching Issues and Answers, and we have two guests from the National Conservation Authority. Ms. Jacinta Lee, who is the general manager, and we also have Mr. James Edwin, who is the chairman of the National Conservation Authority. We know that at the beaches, you have facilities to maintain, but it might be a different challenge to the other sort of facilities that are more, more land-based. Can you tell us a bit more about that and what you, would you like to provide for the, the persons, not just the vendors, but persons who come to enjoy the facilities that you have? Yes, okay. Uh, at NCA, we realize that our primary responsibility is maintaining the beaches. And we want to uh, encourage people to visit the beach, uh, locals and visitors. So um, we've been on a, a drive to actually um, build proper facilities on the beaches so that people can be comfortable when they go to the beach. For instance, at VG, we were able to provide this vending facility that affords people a comfort area where they could change, where they could um, ease themselves and have uh, something to eat as well. Pigeon Island, the same, this is working quite well. I mean, P the Pigeon Island is a real success story. Locals are really enjoying the facility that we provided for them. But we have a, a trouble area at Rodney Bay where every year we land thousands of visitors, hundreds of thousands of visitors on this beach and there's no real public facility there for them. Right now we're in the process, we have plans, approved plans, yeah. to, to build a washroom facility and also a vending facility for the vendors to get some organization into, into that space. Uh, because if we are bringing people to our shores, we must provide the facilities and amenities for them. So we are advanced stages on this. Hopefully the funding will come. Mm -hmm. We are talking to a few agencies like the Tourism Enhancement Fund. We are also talking to um, tourism the Tourism Authority. And there are some promising discussions going on and hopefully, if not by the end of this year, early next year, we should see some progress on this. Yeah. Before well, we wind up, yeah. I'm sorry, the, the, what are some of the other beaches that you're, you're identifying right now? I, did, I noticed you did mention Sandy Beach a little earlier. What are the prospects of other beaches on the island which are popular with St. Lucian that you're looking to get these stations in? Right. We, we also want to, because of the congestion at Rodney Bay, Pigeon Island, VG, we want to develop other areas. Kazaba is one of the areas that we are looking at. Um, Thanks to Buckeye in Kaldisak, they've provided some limited uh, amenities there. We are hoping that that area can be St. Lucians and visitors can start utilizing that area. They have been. They have been. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, yeah. Roseau Beach is a, a fairly nice area, and that's one area we really would want to 
um, see what can be done with that area. We, we've been talking to the parliamentary rep as well, see what can be done to develop that area so we can open up those areas to visitors and locals. Okay. I, I just want to add that at, at Pigeon Island, we really need, we want to have a safe space for children. And so we've started that process because you find uh, 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 vehicles, particularly on the weekend, um, play loud music. Open the the guys open the backs of the yes. of the of their vehicles and just blast out music. And you find families who just want to enjoy um, the the beaches have difficulty um, doing that. So we're trying to have a, a, a safe space for the children. And apart from that, um, we have people who drive their vehicles right very close to the edge of the beach, and it's on a slant. And we've seen what had, what happened at Viji. A vehicle actually went into the water at Viji, in, on the beach, into the sea at Viji. And so we just want to caution people about parking um, so close to the beach. In fact, um, we, we're planning to upgrade um, Pigeon, right. Pigeon Point mm -hmm. um, so that there'll be designated parking for right. people so they can be just driving um, all over the place. We want yeah. to have a really nice park um, at Pigeon Point. Just before we close, I know that there are a number of entities that you work very closely with. One mm. of them would be the St. Lucia National Trust. Trust Tell right. us about, uh, about that mm. cooperation and Oh, it's been mm. going extremely mm. well. In fact, um, we started our school environmental um, education um, program and the, 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 Nas the National Trust, Trust played a key that. role mm -hmm. um, in that area. We've also worked with like Massey Stores, Harry Spain's, um, Caribbean, um, Green, in, Green in the Caribbean. So it is TEF, TEF yes, right. Tourism Enhancement yeah. Fund. Yeah. And so the Ministry of, of um, Tourism, uh, Department of Fisheries, um, Department of Planning. And I must give a shout out to, to Mr. Poyot and, 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 and his, and his team from the actual, uh, right. And they've assisted mm -hmm. a, a whole lot. And I'm, I'm really thankful for that kind of cooperation and collaboration. Well, we're going to close off in a minute and a half or so. But since we've discussed a lot about the behavior of St. Lucians, both on the beaches and in, in public at the parks and whatever, we also know that ra you have rangers and wardens as well. Right. And still in operation and what are their powers in terms of controlling what St. Lucians do at the, at the beaches and at the parks? We wish we could have uh, rangers yes. <laughs> <laughs> on all our beaches. Um, but right now we have at, at Ridwee, at Redway Beach, we have our three rangers thanks to the Tourism Enhancement Fund. And we would really like to expand um, to other beaches mm -hmm. as well. But thanks to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, we work closely with them as well. Um, they will be having dedicated um, police officers on some of the beaches. And so we hope in time to be able to, be able to expand to to all of our beaches just to provide that that security and safety for beach users yeah, I, ideally um, we would love to have uh, at some point there was uh, a unit called uh, was it the rangers or beach uh, rangers uh, I, I think it was under the original yeah. parks and beaches commission where there was patrol and um, there was rapid policeman, response. Rapid response. response. Yeah. Ideally, if we could uh, have a unit like this based at the NCA, that would help us do all the monitoring and all the policing that we really should be doing as well. So, so a very good way for us to end up on our program this yes. morning. We, oh, we ended already? Uh, yes, we are. Okay. We, <laughs> we certainly know that there's a lot that more that we can speak yes. about. Maybe yes. even for the programs, you can look at other areas. Yes. Of, uh, matters pertaining to the NCA, but I'd like to thank you, Mr. James Edwin, the Chairman of the National yeah. Conservation Authority and General Manager, Justin Lee, for being part of our program this, this day, Issues and Answers, and we're certainly hoping that emanating from this discussion, we'll have better behavior as far as the public is concerned as they go to the beaches and enjoy the natural amenities right here in St. Lucia. This has been Issues and Answers. I'm Ryan O'Brien. You can join us next time for another program. Yeah, I think...